Welcome to Gallup Games. We're going to be playing Loot and Loaded. It's a set collecting game where you shoot each other and have a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Woo! Here we are at the gaming table. We are going to be playing Loot and Loaded. It is a set collecting game where you are collecting different types of cards that will give you more points the more you collect them. But the crazy thing is you're actually fighting each other for the items in these locations. We will now explain and set it up. So to get started here, um, you are gonna take one location tracker for however many players are playing and place them onto the table. Next, you're gonna pass out five player cards with one location marker to every player. Your card is a little bit different, although they all play exactly the same. Now you're going to select which cards you'll be using in the game. First, we're gonna to put together the deck that we'll be using in the game. So we're gonna be playing a three player game today. So first we are going to start with three of the basic cards, which are the orange cards. And then for the unique cards, which are the green cards, we're going to be doing two of them. Okay, and then very last, we're gonna be doing two of the action cards. After shuffling the deck, you will take over, flip up one card under each of the location markers. Now, find the cards that have the white back and place them in a pile near the board. These are the white flag cards that will be used during the game. Okay, we're gonna go over this whole explanation of how to play the game. We have three locations as Zach described, and we have our turn trackers. Everyone simultaneously is going to pick a location that they're going to go with their bounty hunter to collect this loot. We have these three locations and we are going to secretly take our location tracker and select which one we want to put and then we put it face down the other people are going to do the same they're going to put it on this two and he is going to secretly put it on two as well but they don't know that all at once everyone reveals these two are coming to the same location and this one is coming to this location number one and this person gets this one now, these two are going to face off in a duel to get this card. Zach will explain that duel in a second. So, in the example that Les had just explained, blue and orange picked number two, which is the badge of humility. This means that they're going to have to duel for it. When a duel happens, both players will look at their five cards that they were dealt at the beginning of the game and pick one of them and place it face down in front of them. These cards work similar to rock, paper, scissors, um, as shown right there. After each player has picked one, they will place them face down and reveal them at the same time. As in this case, you will refer to the table to see which one beats the other one. The winner will pick the badge of humility and keep it. The loser will pick a white flag card. Now here's a here's another question. What would happen if these two players picked the same gun card? Both players picked the deadly gun in this case. Well, before you do anything, you wanna make sure that the two blasters are close to the players. Once we flip up the cards and we see that there are two of the same cards, in this case, the two deadly guns, then me and Wes would both grab the blasters and have a duel in the way that we chose at the beginning of the game. Which could be a shootout version with a bottle or a wild, wild west way where you shoot each other. The winner of the duel then wins this card and then the other player wins the white flag. Okay, so the first thing to know about the Acolyte and Dueling Gun is that they are one-time use guns. This means once you use them, you discard them and can't use them ever again. The Acolyte Gun, right here, the white one, is the gun that can beat all of the other three colored guns. This one automatically beats all the other ones. If though, a dueling gun is played, that forces a duel on anything played, including the Acolyte card. So essentially, if you think that somebody may be playing an Acolyte, a dueling could be your best bet to try to counteract that. Once all players have received a card this round, replenish all of the empty location markers with new cards. Move the round tracker to the next round. 
When resolving duels, there's two ways that you can resolve them. Um, and this is typically something you'll choose before you start the game. So the very first way is a standard bottle shootout. So in this case, you're gonna set up the bottle and whenever there's a duel, you wanna try to put the bottle equally between the two players that are gonna be doing the shoot. So what will happen is if me and Wes were to flip over the same colored card, then you know our guns would be like this, cocked, I guess. Not cocked. cocked. Or cocked. Or oh! Not. <laughs> so in this case, um, the moment we see that we both did a blue, we're gonna race to grab our guns, cock it, and shoot. But the one rule is that whatever table or surface you're playing on, you wanna make sure that the front of the gun does not pass that so you have an equal opportunity, right? So you can't be shooting like this. You, shooting like this. you have to be shooting right here. So it's a little bit of a harder shot. The other one is the wild, wild shootout. So what you do in that one is you're gonna take the guns and you're gonna put them about 10 feet apart from each other on either side of the table. So I'll put mine over there, Wes will put his over there on a table, on, a, on the ground, however you want. And then, and you're also, yep, you're also gonna put the bullets together with the guns. I'm gonna put mine over there. And then same thing, the moment that we both see that we both played the blue card, we're gonna run over to the guns and then we're gonna shoot each other. Shoot each other. Me so too. whoever shoots, and hits the person, that person wins the card from the location, like they did a duel because you're bounty hunters, you're shooting each other. The other person gets the white flag and says, oh, I retreat. <laughs> um, and in both scenarios, if you both miss, you go and you grab the bullets and you go again. All righty. Zach and I are gonna play a quick game. This all. And we're gonna set this up by placing this down. Okay, a four leaf clover. Oh, queen's jewels. And a crystal flower. So that's how mm. we're gonna start. So Zach and I are going to secretly select which one we're going to put. And I think Zach is going to go for the queen's jewels. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to go for something different then the queen's jewels and we'll flip on three. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, of course. I went for the queen's Little, jewels uh, just messing with them. Okay, so he got that. You leave these face up and you replenish. And move the another four leaf clover and another crystal flower. I don't know how well we flip we we shuffled. Shuffled. Okay. Um I think Zach is going to go for something specific and um, I'm gonna try and battle him for it, but I don't know if he will actually go for it. We'll see. Okay, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I knew you were going for that thing, so okay. I wanted to battle you. Alrighty. <clears throat> Alright, at this point, we get our cards, we have the guns ready right here, and we're going to be shooting this bottle here on the um, on the table. <clears throat> and mm. so again, you have to remember which cards, which guns we beat which, and um, the Valiant beats the, not the Sneaky, the Valiant beats the Deadly, the Deadly beats the Sneaky, and the Sneaky sneaks up on the Valiant to beat him. And as usual, it shows him here in that order so you can remember. I think that he's going to put down this, so I'm going to put down this. Okay. Let's see. All right, on three. One, two, three. Oh, boy. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Dang it. Zach beat me. So that was a duel, and um, Zach wins this guy, and I, unfortunately, wave my white flag, put it here, and we replenish, of course, it's another lucky four leaf clover. <laughs> so if Zach gets this third one, then he's- Gets to draw a new card. Gets to draw a new card as the bonus. And we move this to the third. And we put um, our guns back into our hands. Going on to the next one. Um, I am going to go I'm going here. for probably the crystal flower. Zach is not things. going for a crystal flower, but okay, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, this... you didn't even go for it? No, I told you I was going for the crystal flower. Wow. I was afraid you were going to duel me. 
I was going to duel him. We didn't shuffle these very well, so um, I'm putting different ones out. Okay, so next round, we're on round four here. As you can tell, sometimes the rounds can go pretty quick, and sometimes they can be a little bit longer. All right, so now we've got... Dynamite, so remove two of your cards and gain five points. So it's a little bit risky, but it can be pretty good, too. That is a good card, but it's... Okay. This can also be used with white flag cards, which is, you know, could be pretty good. I'm going to go for this because I think Zach's going to go for the other one. All right. One, two, three. I knew it. <laughs> and so when you use the copycat, you have to choose the card immediately, which one you want to copy. And I am going to copy the crystal flower yeah. because if you copy the queen's jewels, it's, it's, the sets are per unique, so if you're copying this guy, it wouldn't actually benefit me. So I'm going to copy the Crystal Flower. And before we replenish, I because I got a third uh, four-leaf clover, I get to just draw a card and, and gain whatever it is, which is another four-leaf clover. <laughs> <laughs> Should have shuffled a little better. Um, um, if Wes were to have an action that says draw from the deck or something, you always start from the very first location and... You know, in this case, it was just me, so I just got to do it, but you usually resolve stuff in one, two, three order. Use your dueling gun <laughs> automatically, or what? One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so the duel is we have to put our hands on our side and Trent, Trent's in the room. Trent, call it out. Three, two, one, duel. Three, two, one, duel. Oh, I missed! <laughs> Where'd my ball go? <laughs> oh, dang, I missed again. Woo! He got a little crazy and missed it. I missed two times in a row. And that risk it. paid off for me because he didn't. He got a white flag instead. Ooh. And that's the game. We'll explain scoring now. At the end of 10 rounds, you will score your points. Um, what you have here is two points per card, and the most badges get plus four points at the end of the game. So I have two badges, and Zach has only one badge. So that means that I get the plus four. So I get two, four, plus four. That's eight points. You can also get multiples. So if I had four snake oils, it would be worth 14 points. So it's a, so you can stack sets on each other. And that's the basics of scoring in Loot and Loaded. If you need further explanation, the rules have them in there. No!